President Biden is pledging to combat climate change with some new goals. Friday marked the second and final day of his global climate summit. Mr. Biden highlighted the need for international partnerships to address the issue and focused on the economic opportunities in renewable energy development. On the first day of the summit, the president announced plans for the U.S. to cut greenhouse gas emissions in half by the year 2030. For more, I want to bring in CBSN contributor Isaac Stonefish. Isaac is the founder of Strategy Risks, which provides research and analysis on China's impact on businesses. Isaac, always good to talk to you. So let's start out with the big question. How important is China in the global fight against climate change? It's massively important. It is the live or die issue. And I think what policymakers are waking up to is the idea that perhaps the best way to encourage China to fight climate change is not to yield on other issues, but instead to push so that Beijing understands its responsibility. Well, the Biden administration published a report Friday, Isaac, saying that the U.S. actually lags behind China in developing clean technologies. What is China doing right? So they are, from a business perspective, manufacturing, creating, producing products that are very cutting edge on the climate change fight. It's very different from five or 10 years ago when China was, was still an importer of these technologies. There is a lot that U.S. innovatives can learn from the technology that's being produced domestically in China today. President Biden also announced a new global partnership for climate smart infrastructure on Friday. Which countries are involved and what do they hope to achieve? Biden would love this to be with some limitations as global as possible. And I think what this really shows is in strong contrast to how the Trump administration handled it, Biden wants to internationalize the fight against climate change. And similar to a lot of its other foreign policy decision, it wants climate change to be something that countries discuss, countries work together on, a much more diplomatic approach and something that, you know, with a lot of things Biden is doing is, is going to be a lot more popular on the left than on the right. Some countries have agreed in this summit to limit or end the use of coal. What more can you tell us about that? So Beijing is getting mixed press, I would say, better press than it deserves after Xi Jinping said that they would strictly limit the increase of coal. China already produces <coughs> China already produces more than so I'll try that again. China already burns more than half of the world's coal. Coal is, is the worst emitter. And there's a lot of people out there who want to see not Beijing not accelerating the rate with which it's burning coal and getting credit for that, but actually to strictly limit the amount of coal that's being burnt in China. Last question for you, Isaac. President Biden praised Russian President Vladimir Putin for his comments on carbon capture. Where does Russia stand on climate change? I think Russia has a somewhat similar view to China, where it recognizes the economic potential of doing so. It, it doesn't position itself the way that China does globally as the patron saint of globalization and climate change and these international ideals that Beijing likes to speak about internationally, but not domestically. For Russia, it is much more of an economic game. And I think a lot of people were surprised that Biden did publicly praise Putin. But I think it is a sign that the Biden administration, another sign of many that we've seen, that the Biden administration is in many ways putting climate change over other international political issues. Hmm. All right. Isaac Stonefish, thank you.